No need for further explanation, let's get straight into it. Our first recipe is from Chocolate Cacao with almost 100 million views. He calls it the ultimate chocolate moist cake hashtag Schwartz cooking recipe. So let's take a look. Uh, did he just show us how to open chocolate packages? 150 grams of chocolate in the chip form. Then 6 20 milliliters of milk that I got for myself. My dad's still not back. 130 grams of sugar. 30 grams of cocoa powder. He also added agar agar agar, but I feel like we should add it later. Before we move on to the stove, we'll measure out 7 grams of it. On medium low heat, we'll start whisking everything together. Once it comes to a simmer, we'll add in the agar agar agar. By the time I post this video, it's definitely going to be past December 11th. Just so you guys don't accuse me of using expired products, I'll show you today's date. Anyways, we'll put this in the fridge and rest overnight. The cocoa powder sprinkle is kind of aggressive. I liked it though. It's been about 12 hours. It looks really jiggly. It doesn't look as smooth as his. Maybe it's the container's fault. Also, the structural integrity doesn't feel as sturdy either. So let's top it off with cocoa powder, give it a taste, and rate 1 through 10. I mean, it's chocolate and sugar, so it doesn't taste bad, but the granular texture confuses me a lot. Do you see all these little spots? Maybe I didn't mix it thoroughly enough, or maybe I added the agar 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 too late. This recipe is super simple, and I see a lot of potential, so we'll be trying it again. But my execution today will be a 6 out of 10. I saw this recipe on Patrick's account. He calls it the eclair cake. So easy to make, and it only takes 5 ingredients. <laughs> oh my, I can't get enough of that cream. It's basically a custard filling with a chocolate covered top. Eclairs are pretty difficult to make. I guess this is like an easier way to get around it. And check out this transition. Do you think it was smooth? So to six eggs, we'll add a cup of sugar. And then four cups of milk, which I don't have. So two cups of heavy cream and two cups of water. Give it a quick whisk, pour into a pot, put it on medium low heat and continuously stir it. According to his instructions, it should thicken up in about five minutes or so. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes. I feel like scrambled egg is going to come out before it turns into a custard. So we're going to use a little cheat by adding in some milk. Just kidding, it's cornstarch slurry. It should thicken up the sauce instantly. Going to run it through a sieve real quick in case we created any egg lumps. Then we'll cover the top with plastic wrap and let it completely cool. In case you forgot, this is the vegan, gluten-free, pre-made pie crust we got from Trader Joe's last time. Now all we have to do is just to finish a cream pie, I mean, a finish the eclair cake. You can just use melted chocolate on top, but I'm using the leftover truffle mixture from earlier. Cause you know I don't waste food. I'm gonna spread it out evenly and stab the spatula into your heart and let it cool overnight. It's the next day now, as you can see, the pie is fully set. Somebody took a piece from me late night last night when he was hungry, but don't ask me who it is. Looking at this, I'm slowly realizing that maybe the Boston cream pie and the Boston cream donut is just failed attempts at eclairs. Further affirming my belief that people don't want to eat new food. They just want to eat the same old food in different formats. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. As you can probably assume, after taking that bite, the bottom half of my face is covered with... <clears throat> I would show you the money shot, but I feel like we've already done a semi-face reveal a couple months ago, so I'll save it for now. Overall, it has very good and balanced flavors. I didn't spit that thing out, my face was covered with custard and if, well, a piece of it fell. All you have to do to make this cake is to make the custard, and it's pretty simple, so I'll give it an 8.7 out of 10. Last recipe identifies as a cake, but this one is an actual cake. It claims to be the moistest chocolate cake of all time, and it's super easy to make. I'll be reading through the ingredients pretty fast, so pay attention. 130 grams of flour, 200 grams of sugar, 65 grams of cocoa powder, 3 4 teaspoons of baking powder, a key bump of baking soda, an egg, 60 milliliters of oil, 130 milliliters of milk, I don't have milk, so I'm doing half heavy cream, half water. Finally, some warm water. I'm afraid that's gonna cook the egg, so I'll whisk it a little bit.
a teaspoon of instant coffee, and a teaspoon of dessert MSG. Pour into a baking dish and into the oven at 300 for 25 minutes. While we're waiting, we'll make the topping, which is 450 grams of chocolate and 280 milliliters of hot heavy cream. You don't have to mix it immediately. If you let it sit there, it will melt the chocolate completely. While waiting for both items to cool, you can sing a song or do a little dance or something. Now once the cake is cooled down, we'll mix together the ganache and pour it directly on top. It's super satisfying. If you hear that, that's the police coming to arrest me for how I cut it. It's kind of falling apart, but it looks really good though. Now let's give it a taste and rate it on 13. The flavors and the moistness are all on point, but for some reason I feel like it's way more crumbly than I expected. Maybe because the heavy cream and water situation, again, doesn't have any structural integrity. But it definitely tastes amazing with a ganache on top, so I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's December hot chocolate season, but not just any hot chocolate, Mexican hot chocolate. Starting with this Cortez spiced chocolate with cinnamon in it. A lot of you in the comments told me the hack that if you cut chocolate with a serrated knife, it doesn't fly everywhere. And it seems like it's true. I guess the comment section can do much more than just roasting me till I cry. So this is 5 ounces of chocolate. We're gonna do half a cup of milk and half a cup of heavy cream. Bring to a simmer while mixing constantly. Finally, to enhance the flavor, we'll add a tablespoon of instant coffee. The mug is kind of dirty, don't ask me why. But look how thick it is. It would be ideal to top it off with some whipped cream, but I don't feel like beating it on the couch right now, so let's give it a taste and rate it 113. Incredibly rich, smooth, and satisfying. The chocolate and the dairy works really well with the spices added into it. I think Mexican chocolate is going to be a staple in my diet from now. 9 out of 10. You can use this ratio for any chocolate you have too. This is a no-bake dessert, which is my favorite type of dessert. My quick and easy nature, combined with my NPC brain, prevents me from delaying gratification. If I'm craving something sweet, it has to be put together instantly. We'll use a cup of peanut butter. Are you impressed that that's the real thing, not the processed one? And then a third of a cup of maple syrup, a fourth of a cup of butter, room temp or melted, splash of dessert MSG, and mix everything together till smooth like this. And then two cups of almond flour. A lot of nuts in this one. I guess the more the merrier. We'll fold in the almond flour along with some chocolate chips. And that's basically the filling. Put that in a container aligned with parchment paper. Smooth it out. Put this in the fridge for like 30 minutes. But I'm just going to put it in the freezer for 5. While waiting for it to set, we'll quickly melt a cup of chocolate and glaze it over the top. Make sure you spread it evenly across the whole surface. Gluten-free, no-bake, and vegan. I kind of feel like an upper-middle-class American. Later. I have pretty high hopes for this one as I'm a big fan of peanut butter. Kinda looks like a part of a giant Reese's cup. Now let's give it a taste and rate it on 13. It's even better. It's not overwhelmingly sweet like Reese's. The chocolate on top has a lot of crunchiness that balance well with the gooey nature of the peanut butter filling. I was a little worried about the almond flour being a little granular, but it's completely smooth. You can't even taste it as the peanut butter is really powerful. Just so you know, this is really dangerous because I'm getting the urge to eat this whole thing right now. I'll give it a 9.3 out of 10. If you're thinking, the recipes today are kind of difficult, think no more because this is the easiest one ever. Starting with 4.5 ounces of chocolate and 3 quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Bring it over to the stove on medium low and start mixing and melting. When it's nice and smooth like this, we'll transfer it to a container and put it in the fridge overnight. When it's cold, we'll take out a scoop and shape it into perfect round balls. Maybe I should be using both of my hands, but I don't want to waste another glove. They're a little too soft to work with, so we're going to put it in the freezer for 15 minutes. They're a lot less sticky when they're cold and i forbid you guys from commenting how good i am at handling balls we'll dust cocoa powder and roll them in it to prevent sticking we'll dust some more to cover up the imperfections and that's it i didn't know chocolate truffles are this low effort why am i paying so much for them at the store usually i put the whole ball into my mouth but i'll just take a small bite to show you guys the cross section don't inhale while taking a bite because you might choke on the cocoa powder don't ask me how i found out it's smooth rich and velvety i'm still impressed by how easy it was i'll give it a 9 out of 10 you should definitely make this for Christmas. 
We made brigadero last week for the family recipe video and it was a disaster. So we're back at it again with an improved version. Starting with 15 grams of butter, 30 grams of cocoa powder, and a whole can of condensed milk. We'll put it on the stove on medium low to heat it up and mix thoroughly. I've had this non-stick pan for a week now, but I'm still mind blown every time I use it. Did you know that nothing sticks when you use non-stick pan? After it's heated through, we'll put it in a container and let it cool for two hours. While waiting, we'll trim out some strawberries. I think usually brigadeiros are balls with chocolate sprinkles. Since I forgot to get it, we're gonna just wrap the brigadeiro around the strawberry to make it like a stuffed ball. After cooling it, it should be much more pliable since the cocoa powder has some starch content that will thicken it up. But this is, this is not looking good right now. How do people in those videos work with it so easily? This is way too sticky to work with. I think I'm gonna get a new pair of gloves and put some oil on it. Alright, this feels much better. So we'll take a decent amount, roll it into a ball, flatten it, and try to wrap a strawberry around it. It gets even more difficult when the oil gets on the strawberry, so it's too slippery to be wrapped. I wonder if you're from Brazil and watching this, are, are you getting triggered right now? But the second ball is starting to stick again, so I'm done. I'm just gonna eat these strawberries. So what do you think of my strawberry stuffed brigadero? It's a very romantic dessert. You should make this for your significant others for Valentine's Day. Let's cut it open and check out the cross section. Looks pretty good, so why don't we give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I mean, the only other Brigadero I've ever had looks like this. So I think overall it's pretty great. I drink condensed milk like it's normal milk. Of course I'll finish it. Needless to say, I didn't make it right. So if you're an expert of the cuisine, why don't you send me some videos so I can give it another try? Every great video ends with a good nut. As you guys already know, my favorite nut is the donut. My second favorite nut is coconut. Third, cashew. And fourth, hazelnut. This is half a pound of it. We're gonna throw it in a 350 degree oven and roast it for 20 minutes or so. After they're completely cool, we'll put it in the food processor. I think the nuts are whispering to us. Listen. Do you hear the subtle crackling? Why is that? And then a cup of powder sugar, five tablespoons of cocoa powder, two tablespoons of oil, a pinch of salt, and as much chocolate as you want. It's been running for a really long time. The machine's overheating. It's a little old, and this is as fine as it can get. It looks a little granular, but I don't think you'll be able to taste it. At any point of the blending process, if your machine starts giving you a hard time, just put in more oil to thin it out. So once again, we've made homemade Nutella, or as you guys would call it, prehistoric cheese pulp. Last but not least, let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Super easy, foolproof, great texture and flavor. I think we should be able to keep it for three weeks or so. I really enjoyed making these chocolate recipes. I hope you try some of these out. It's a great way to increase your dopamine levels. If you're already hopped up on sugar, you can watch my older videos to produce some serotonin. Alright, thank you.